Um, so I'm going to show you the, the design I came up with for her and something that I'm still using in all my classes. <clears throat> I came up with the notion of dynamic cell models where students can take components of a cell and put them together um, on a lab bench as they're looking at a cell in the microscope. So for example, if a student is looking at um, an onion cell, they would take a membrane and act like the cytoskeleton and bend it into the right shape for the cell that they were looking at under the microscope at that time. And then they'd put a cell wall around the membrane and any organelles that they saw inside the cell they could then put in as well. So in an onion cell they would also see a nucleus. For someone who's visually impaired, once my students put this together, that student can feel around and they can tell that there's this thick cell wall outside of a thinner membrane and then that there's a nucleus with a double membrane and some chromatin inside. <clears throat> Now if this is not an onion cell, but instead it's a cheek cell, there's no cell wall because animal cells don't have it, and students can bend this the right way, put the nucleus in, maybe even show that they've kind of bent the cell a little sticking it on the slide, and even have some bacteria that might be stuck on the outside of a cell. Uh, my students who enter the class without disabilities end up working in teams to be able to create models that represent the cell that they're looking at in the microscope. They end up getting a 3D, more of a spatial awareness of the cell. In fact, sometimes a student will stick a bacteria inside the cell, and when I tell them that there's something wrong with their model, another student will say, wait a minute, that's not a cell inside of a cell, it's on top of a cell. And they all get the idea so much better about what they're looking at. 